It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Powerade, the official sports drink of the Florida State Seminoles. Powerade, power through. And by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. And now your hosts, Gene Deckeroff and head coach, Leonard Hamilton. Welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We talk Florida State basketball in marches here. It's March Madness time. And coach, we still have some work ahead. Regular season, we got North Carolina State, Virginia Tech coming to town. We finish in Winston-Salem, but uh, this is a great time of the year to be a basketball fan. Well, it's three, we have three games left. Uh, we're trying to gear up and trying to continue to keep getting better. Uh, this team has played well enough to win our share of games, but we still have a little more improvement that we can make, and we have a little work ahead of us. Uh, this is, but and we know that we have to be focused in order to, com to complete the season real strong. This Seminole team set a new school record by winning eight consecutive ACC games in a row. That comes to an end in Chapel Hill. We'll have highlights of Florida State's game against the eighth ranked at the time, now fifth ranked North Carolina Tar Heels. Also, a big win over Notre Dame at the Tucker Center this previous week. And in between those highlights packages, we'll have a chance to visit with the Green Vipers. Those are the walk-ons that play very well on the practice court and on the court when they get a chance. That's on today's show. We invite you to stay with us. Florida State basketball. Today we talk FSU versus North Carolina. And coach, uh, we got an eight game win streak. Congratulations, the longest in the history of Florida State basketball in ACC play. That's a tremendous accomplishment. We didn't lose a game until late February after winning almost all of them in February and late January. Coach, North Carolina is as good a team as they've had year in and year out. There's something about the light blue there in Chapel Hill. Well, there's no doubt that Carolina is Carolina. They have a rich tradition. They're a very good basketball team. And they were a little more, more <clears throat> too much for us on this particular day. There's no doubt about that. We we seem to have run out of gas. Our guys have been wor working real hard, and we've been playing well enough to win some games, and we came up a little short against this a very good North Carolina team. Well, we, we continue to try to get that ball inbounds, and Chris Kamaji's had a whale of a month of February, and a nice little turnaround jump by Philip Kofer, our leading scorer a year ago, and he's still trying to find that touch. Terrence Mann had a big game, not only shooting the ball, but assists. He had six assists, including that one to David Nichols. Well, we needed him to create some opportunities for his teammates, and uh, Terrence is really becoming more and more of a stat stuffer. Yeah, I'll do Kevin Gelly with a nice jump shot. He had seven big first half points. Here's MJ Walker. Can't get in through, and let's see if the big fella can make a triple. He can. We got off to a slow start. We kind of inched our way back into it before halftime, and, and we're at least uh, playing pretty good basketball. Uh, we, uh, as Raquan Gray, he's he, he's been being, he's playing better and better as he as he matures through the season. And he's doing a real good job for us. The big fella two for two from beyond the arc and another assist and Trent Forrest finishes. Terrace Mann, like you said, a stat stuffer in this ball game. There's no doubt that, that we have some, some really good parts. And I just kind of feel that it's going we're gonna finish real strong. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna start reaching our peak here before too long. Well, he had six assists and he made two of three three-point shots. His three-point shooting has vastly improved over his first two years, of, or first three years of Florida State. Well, you love to see that with any player that comes in, you know, really, really working hard to improve. And Terrence definitely has been one of those guys that, have, that has improved in every area of his game. That's another one of those half dozen assists that Terrence Mann had. We worked the ball around against this man to man. David Nichols has a heck of a game in Chapel Hill. His first trip there. Well, there's no doubt that we really needed him. He came off the bench and gave us a big lift in the first half. Yeah, David Nichols uh, plays point guard for us. He spells Trent Forrest. It's a three point ball game at halftime, 37 34, coach. And uh, we're going to make it a basket for basketball game against North Carolina on their home court for a while. Well, I felt like we kind of ran into a wall. We like the fact we ran out of gas. We, we just couldn't seem to make a basket. And, and when you're not on the road against a very good basketball team and, and you're, you're really not uh, being efficient offensively, sometimes it takes its toll on you. And I think that's what happened in Terrence this game. Terrence Mann goes to the basket there. Coach, he made two three-point shots, a nice layup. He just drove right down uh, Franklin Street there and scored a basket. Well, we, there's no doubt we were, we were right there. Uh, seemed like things were going real well, and then we ran into a wall and just couldn't seem to score yeah. for long periods of time. Yeah, we cut it to a four-point ball game, 56-52. And like you say, all of a sudden that wall hit. We couldn't buy a basket, and North Carolina, they stepped it up defensively. And 
Uh, like we ran into a wall in Chapel Hill. There's no doubt about that, but you got to give them credit. That that was, uh, they had a lot to do with that. We just could not muster uh, the, the, the offensive skills and ability uh, consistency in order to be successful remain in the way. Yeah, that Raekwon Gray triple made it a four-point ball game and North Carolina is going to take charge of the ball game. Devin Vassell, a freshman, seeing his first playing time against North Carolina in Chapel Hill. That's, you know, you're playing in front of about 21,000 fans, all wearing light blue coach, and for the freshman to come in and finish with a nice little basket. Pretty well, good there's time. no doubt that when you shoot 30% on the road uh, against a good basketball team, that's not a good recipe for good success. It came down to making baskets. We did not, and North Carolina prevailed, and uh, they hold serve at home. North Carolina, I'll bet you they're number one seed when we get to the uh, field of 68 in just a couple of weeks. Florida State basketball is our subject today. Appreciate you tuning in and following us, and uh, a little later on we'll have highlights of FSU's big win over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at the Tucker Center on Monday night. Between now and then, a chance to visit with the Green Vipers. That's next. Welcome back to our show. We've got uh, Notre Dame Florida State highlights coming up a little later on. And uh, right now, Coach, a chance to visit with the, 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 the walk-ons. They call themselves the Green Vipers, and I think that comes from a comic strip or something. But uh, <laughs> they're an important, integral part of our basketball team. Well, these guys are every bit an uh, integral part of our basketball team. They, they have such great attitudes. They, we, they help create the camaraderie that I think is important for any team to be successful. Uh, they have they they work hard. They help prepare us for every game. They always uh, playing the other team's defense and the other team's offense, and they give us a good look every day. The Green Vipers, they're here. FSU student athletes can be easily spotted on any court, field, or track, donning the school's signature garnet and gold. But for a group of men's basketball players, they take pride in representing another color, green. The green team is made up of five walk-ons and one transfer who play a major role in contributing to the success of Florida State men's basketball. So, you know, we do the scout team, so we try to replicate you know, our next opponent, what they do, how they play. Um, we try to memorize as many of their plays as possible um, and their defensive philosophies so that um, you know, we can get our team the, the best look we can in practice. The guys have embraced their crucial role and have quickly become more than just a practice squad. Last year, former scout team members Raekwon Gray and Anthony Polite took the name from their high school travel team, the Florida Vipers, and merged with the green team to create the group that is now referred to as the Green Vipers. <laughs> Much like the animal they've been named after, the Green Vipers have become some of the most intense, dangerous offenses and defenses Florida State will face throughout the season. Yeah, it's kind of like almost taking another class, uh, pretty much, at least for me, I think of it that way. We watch their film, we have you know, homework, you know, uh, studying the other team, and so just going from game to game and opponent to opponent and um, switching styles, um, it's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun because they're able to you know, replicate what the other team does. And they do it at such a speed where when we get in the game, it kind of slows it down for us. And they've been doing that for the last three years, and it's helped us big time. For us, our success is on their shoulders. And whenever you win games, preparation is behind that. It's at the forefront you know, of any successful game that we've had. And once the ball tips, the Green Vipers continue to play an active role throughout the game. Just try to bring as much energy as possible, um, talking. We try to call out the other team's plays so we've been running them so we can kind of recognize them and call them out. I know they're engaged in the game and there's a million things running through their head. And I'm just trying to like ensure them like, hey, don't overthink it. You're here for a reason. You're skilled. You're talented enough. We trust you. We have faith in you. Just play your game and everything's going to be fine. For many, the experience of being a walk-on will help them beyond their years as a Seminole. Running all these offenses and finding out different things about players, how people interact with each other on the basketball court and even off the court, I feel like it's going to help me a lot as a, I, call, I want an aspiring basketball coach one day. And, and he forgot to include that when he's a head coach, you know, I'll be maybe an assistant coach or, or a booster, something. 
because I know, you know, I want to join a winning program. So he'll, he'll bring he'll bring me and the rest of the green team onto his staff. While their time on the court may be limited, the Green Vipers are essential to Seminole basketball, both on, but more importantly, off the court. I mean, they're just always around and they're always there for us no matter what we need. Um, and it's never a no from them, you know. They are unbelievable teammates. And when I say they're unbelievable teammates, whenever you have Jonathan Isaac uh, fly in to see Travis Light, who's in a hospital at home, that's a relationship that started you know, not only on the court com com as a competitor or as a teammate, but it, it, it goes to the camaraderie off the court and the friendships they established, not only in this four year span at the school, but it's a four year, 40 year and lifetime relationship. For these guys, the experience means way more than the minutes played. I remember specifically like last year, whenever we were playing North Carolina, uh, I remember it was like the final seconds and we ended up winning the game by one, but I remember just like sitting there in the middle of the arena and all the like fans were on their, on their feet and like everybody was screaming. It was so cool. Just like, like soak that in for a second. Like this is the stuff you saw as a kid that you were like, that is so cool. I wish I could be a part of that. And here you are doing that, you know. Locker room jokes, the, you know, the jokes we have on the plane, playing cards in the hotel. Like, there's just so many experiences that you just wouldn't get otherwise. And like, that's why I always just think about it. Like, I'm gonna look back at this as some of the best times of my life. The work put in by the green team may often go unnoticed, but every once in a while, when the roles get reversed, they've got a team of guys lifting them up just like they do for everyone else all season. I'm Abby Radica for The Leonard Hamilton Show. Welcome back to our show. Always great to see the Green Vipers in action. We just saw the Green Vipers on television. You had a chance to meet them. Let's go back to the video, Coach, and uh, watch highlights of Florida State's big home win over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Big quick turnaround, Coach. We played an afternoon game at Chapel Hill. 49 hours later, we're playing at the Tucker Center. I was very concerned about this game because obviously, whenever you're playing four games in nine days, and this being that was the fourth game, you know, you're concerned whether or not you're going to run out of gas and have enough to finish. But we got off to a, a, a pretty good start, but then we played uh, catch up for the majority of the game because uh, Notre Dame was playing so well. Nice one handed flush by Terrence Band, who continues to lead the Seminole second on our team in scoring. And uh, in this ball game, he gets a nice slam dunk. He'll have enough, uh, we'll watch it again from the rim level, and he goes up there and knocks it. We penetrate, we score points in the paint against Notre Dame early. Well, Terrence is, is obviously regaining some of his health back, and you see he's moving a lot better. And, uh, he's, he's not thinking nearly as much. He's not trying to land uh, gingerly. It took him a long while, you know, to, to regain his health and see him do it now. He's in a good place. Nice spacing on that two-on-one break. And when P.J. Savoy comes into the ball game, you expect a shot like that, he just knocked the net off, Coach. Well, it, we definitely winning games by committee. Guys are playing tremendously unselfish and obviously getting the ball in the field. Uh, it really helps us. He's been very efficient inside. He and Chris are a good combination of guys that are are playing off each other and we're very pleased to have guys who uh, are playing like a tag team. They, they keep coming in the game and keep being productive, which is very good. Is it just me or is Chris Kamaji rebounding more aggressively now than he has in his career? There's no doubt that Chris is playing some really good basketball. Uh, he's very efficient. Uh, he's putting up some pretty good numbers and there he is calling for the ball and letting everybody know hey, I'm here. Uh, get me, get me the ball, and I'll finish it. Seven foot four, you get the ball to him, and here's Devin Vassell. Now he's gonna, he's gonna lead us in scoring in this ball game, coach. You love the way this freshman is developing, don't you? Well, he's playing with an awful lot of confidence, and you love to see that this time of year. Yeah, look at that three-point shot. He's got a nice stroke from distance, and uh, his teammates. I'll tell you what, he's always got a smile on his face, coach. Well, he's a hard worker. He's confident, and he's coming. He's ready to play whenever you put him in the game. Thirteen points, a career high, seven rebounds, and how about this steal by MJ Walker? Well, we needed that because we was kind of playing nip and tuck. Uh, we, we had a hard time defending uh, Notre Dame. They were executing very well. Yeah, we trailed 10 at one point in this first half, and plays like that from 
sophomore guard, MJ Walker, a big reason why we were able to tie it at halftime. A nice drive to lay. We finally get a lead, Coach. <laughs> right toward the end of the first half. Yeah, it's Terrence Mann. Finishes with a layup, and uh, you know, he's probably just guys are pretty tall, 6'10, 6'10 in there, and he took it right to the rim and laid it in at halftime. Coach, we're tied. We're 19 and 2 when we lead or tied at halftime, and that's a pretty good sign. Well, this is one of Notre Dame's better offensive outputs. And they had not been shooting that well, they haven't been scoring that well, but in our game, for whatever reason, they found the, they found the range, and uh, they were really, really playing very well. But we kind of hung in there and hung in there, and, and we had those spurts, and, and we were able to able to get ahead and catch up and finish there strong at the end of the game. They had an eight-point lead. MJ makes it a five-point ball game, and the Seminoles now are going to get a little bit of a run, Coach, and narrow the gap. And plays like this with MJ Walker, great dime delivered by Trent Forrest. What an assist. Once again, that's the guys playing off each other instinctively. Uh, Trent trying to drive the baseline. I thought maybe he's going to get in trouble, but uh, that was a great play by uh, MJ. Speaking of great plays, how about this? Little layup by Devin Vassell, another assist by, you know who, the stat stuffer, number 14, Terrence Mann. Watch, watch this pass again, a wrap around. Once, once again, he's getting in the game, and instinctively, Devin's uh, just in the right place at the right time. That's two of his 13 points, a transition triple. You'll take that every night of the week by David Nichols. David Nichols, he's always seen to hit, give us a big bucket when we need it. Now we got it down to a two-point ball game, get it inside. Fiondu Cabangeli goes to work, and he makes the layup, and he's got a three-point opportunity. Well, he, he's been very consistent once we get the ball into him inside. Sophomore, redshirt sophomore from Canada, has good balance, great hands, Coach. I think that makes a guy that plays that 4-5 position. No doubt about that. He's really, really coming to a really in his own. Trailing by three, and how about this finish? Maybe the pivotal play of the ballgame, Coach. No doubt about that. He got our fans energized. Uh, our players got excited. Uh, great instinctive move, a follow-up, and then came right back down the court and followed up with a three. That really, really was the turning point in the game. Florida State now had trailed. We take the lead and we never let go. Watch this triple again. He had, he had radar on that basketball coach. <laughs> oh my goodness, nothing but net. Now we've got, the, it's a tie ball game. They, Notre Dame never retakes the lead and, and we get timely baskets down the stretch and the big guys and the guards all contribute. Speaking of the guards, how about this flush by Terrence Mann? Well, that was one of the highlights of the, of the season as far as I'm concerned. Follow up a basket we got to have. The clock's running down, and Terrence goes in, and you can just tell he's getting healthy, getting his health back and his spring back in his legs. Yeah, he, he had that spring last year in the uh, NCAA tournament, and then he goes up there and flushes with one hand. Time runs out. Florida State prevails 68 61. A huge win, coach, and our 10th ACC win of the season. Well, it's very important that you start uh, get stacking on those victories this time of the year because you're kind of playing for seeding. You plan for a lot of things, and we out rebounded very well. We had, uh, we led with assists. Uh, we, we we forced them. We had too many turnovers, but at the end of the day, we did just enough for us to get our tenth victory. Forty rebounds against the team is a pretty good rebounding ball club. No doubt about that. No Dan's a typical ACC team that you had to play well against, and we we took control of the game with about six minutes to go. And something, what they say is not how you start, it's how you finish. 68 61 final score. Knowles knock off Notre Dame. And we look ahead to a very busy and hectic final week of the regular season. We'll talk about the week ahead in just a moment. We have reached the home stretch of the regular season. Florida State involved ACC play coming up today, Saturday. It's NC State at the Tucker Center, 12 noon. Then Tuesday night, coach, a very special night. It's senior night on the campus of Florida State University, a Tuesday night senior night. Well, there's no doubt that uh, those senior nights uh, become, they take on a life of themselves. Uh, you, you, we have five seniors, uh, guys who have meant an awful lot to our program. Uh, it's emotional. You're glad to see them go. You, you hate to see them go. Uh, you know they're moving on in their career, and they have to go out and kind of control their emotions and, and go out and help us win the basketball game. That'll be Tuesday at 7 o'clock at the Tucker Civic Center, Florida State versus Virginia Tech. And get there early because the Senior Day festivities begin before tip-off at the Tucker Center. Good luck, Coach, against North Carolina State. We'll see you next time. Thank you. That's Head Coach Leonard Hamilton. I'm Gene Deckeroff. Well, until next week, go no. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show, brought to you by Powerade, the official sports drink of the Florida State Seminoles. Powerade, power through.
and by the Florida Lottery. Over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine.